Now, anyway, congratulations to the presentation. So during the course of my presentation, we are going to talk about uh, uh, five uh, cases. Uh, both uh, domestic and international cases, uh, all of them were related to uh, hacking, and I'm going to give you a short, uh, uh, the, the short summary or consequence. I'm not going to talk of womanizing because uh, uh, this would not be appropriate for men. I mean, talking about it would not be appropriate. And also as a lawyer, I learned uh, uh, this thing, uh, that uh, secrecy, legal secrecy, uh, is uh, uh, very important. So this is uh, better for ladies, to leave this topic to ladies. Now, the first case uh, uh, was uh, uh, in the practice of our law office, and therefore we are not going to, uh, I'm not going to reveal the name. Uh, we were not representing, by the way, the hacking uh, party. We were uh, uh, representing uh, the uh, suffering party. Now, anyway, uh, this guy was uh, fired. However, even after being fired from the company, he was very, still very keen on following uh, the, uh, the destiny of the company, so he uh, kept going back on the server, to the server of the company. Well, it was not a code breaking, it was just a, 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 a password breaking, and he also had some passwords in, in mind, which uh, passwords had not been changed. Um, so he used those passwords and also broke some passwords and got into the server and then uh, copied the mails of the of the uh, uh, managers. He also had an access to the statistics and the business plan and everything. And then, uh, as it normally happens, he became bolder and bolder. And <laughs> he. And then he was uh, having correspondence with his former uh, uh, boss, former boss, and then he copied certain uh, uh, details of the uh, uh, correspondence of his boss uh, that he uh, managed to uh, uh, to eavesdrop, and therefore, obviously, the the bosses also uh, knew also knew that he had an access to these uh, things and then then once he used his uh, home wi-fi uh, probably he was drunk but for 72 hours he was on the server uh, connected to the server uh, hooked up on the server for 72 hours again from his home wi-fi so it was easy to detect then as far as hacking is concerned technically this is quite a uh, simple case however legally speaking uh, the defense said that there is no direct evidence against uh, the uh, the undisclosed person but there's no direct evidence because no one was stood be by him when he uh, committed the crime or when he was committing the crime i'm not telling you who uh, the who the famous uh, hungarian defense lawyer was who came up with this uh, argument obviously the court just swept this away and uh, they had another defense saying that uh, the that someone used his Wi-Fi broke his Wi-Fi and this is why the IP address showed uh, his IP address because probably there was a drive-by hacking uh, at at his house and also the uh, the forensic expert uh, said that this was possible we try to convince the forensic expert uh, to uh, to sort of realize that this was not really a, a practical thing because this was for 72 hours now a drive by hacker would never be standing in front of your place for 72 hours uh, breaking your wifi uh, your wifi and then having an uninterrupted um, 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 online uh, link now then obviously within 72 hours the laptop would uh, uh, the battery would die then the forensic expert said that you that that you can use uh, the battery of the car but even the battery of the car would die then the forensic uh, expert said that yeah but the engine was running yeah but 72 hours i mean for 72 hours running engine uh, that's quite a lot um, so anyway, it, it was it was very very unrealistic. Uh, uh, I mean, this defense argument, and unfortunately, the forensic expert was uh, in favor of this uh, defense argument. I don't want to hurt this person. This was a 60-year-old uh, 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 bloke who, um, who who sort of uh, liked uh, the defendant and uh, wanted to help the defendant uh, with these arguments. And then there was another interesting uh, argument, a defense argument, saying that uh, there was a conspiracy against uh, uh, the defendant. 
this was actually a mid-sized Hungarian company and that this mid-sized Hungarian company um, made this all up, coming up with false evidence, coming up with everything. Even the email address he used uh, was probably made up, uh, fabricated by the, uh, uh, by the, uh, 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 the company, the former company and the former bosses of this chab. So that probably even uh, I I the, the bosses sent themselves this uh, uh, fabricated uh, mail uh, on behalf of this uh, uh, bloke who was the defendant. Now let's see what the court said, the independent Hungarian court. Now. Uh, the fact that uh, there was no one standing by this guy when he was committing his crime, uh, the judge said that yes, but there are quite a lot of cases, uh, for example, even murder cases or homicide, when there's no one standing by uh, the person committing uh, the, uh, the, uh, um, the, the crime, carrying out the crime, uh, and then still uh, the person is uh, after that uh, accused and imprisoned. Uh, although we know that there are per people who uh, sit down in rubber gloves in order to prevent uh, their fingerprints uh, uh, leaving uh, traces on the keyboard. Anyway, there's a basic principle is that uh, anything beyond reasonable doubt, only anything beyond reasonable doubt can be accepted uh, as, um, uh, uh, as uh, can, that, that's the only thing that can be taken into account uh, during a, in the course of a sentence. Anyway, they, uh, the court said that this was not realistic. I mean, that there was a drive-by hacking uh, using, or Wi-Fi hacking using his uh, Wi-Fi like you know anyone standing there for 72 hours uh, in the proximity of like 50 meters or 100 meters we also initiated a uh, site visit in order to see um, whether it was possible however the court uh, the judge overruled this and then the the judge as far as the third argument was concerned the consp conspiracy argument he said that at least seven uh, top managers uh, should have been involved in that conspiracy and they should have uh, uh, prepared for that conspiracy for over seven of over six months uh, therefore that again was not realistic and was not accepted by the court um, again it's very interesting that that uh, uh, this guy uh, knew a lot of nicknames, knew a lot of other, um, uh, knew a lot of uh, other um, 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 details, uh, which was uh, actually uh, indirect evidence, uh, considered to be indirect evidence. Uh, therefore, uh, this is what they used. So, for a certain while, it's it seemed, it appeared, that with the participation of the uh, forensic expert, uh, this would, um, um, uh, the defense would be successful. However, it wasn't. Now, uh, this was only to indicate that the Hungarian um, jurisdiction is still in, in its early childhood in this respect. Next case. This is the solo case from the United States, uh, U.S. versus Gary McKinnon. I don't know if you know Gary McKinnon, um, Pink Floyd uh, wrote uh, a song in order to prevent uh, this guy uh, from being extradited because uh, this guy is arrested in the UK and the US wants to have this guy back in the US. Uh, from 97, uh, this guy, uh, sorry, this, sorry, this guy attacked 97 compu uh, computer networks, including smaller networks like those of the NASA, uh, the NASA, the US Air Force, US Army, Department of Defense, the DOD, and so forth. Um, uh, uh, he stole op system files, uh, deleted op system files, uh, which caused uh, the uh, collapse of uh, 2,000 computers, or the crashing of 2,000 computers in the military district of Washington, resulting in like 800,000 US dollars of damage. Obviously, we know that the uh, uh, claims law in the US is different, so 800,000 uh, could have in included uh, certain um, uh, uh, certain um, e emotional damage as well. You know, emotional distress is a very important element of uh, there, uh, there are also punitive damages. However, this here uh, was not uh, uh, important because uh, because uh, this was not on stake, not at stake. However, uh, this chab, as it turned out later, 
uh, he uh, suffers from uh, a certain syndrome, Asperger's syndrome, uh, which is uh, related to, uh, similar to autism. And uh, therefore, uh, he was searching for UFO files and UFO related infos um, because his preconcept was that a lot of, uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, UFO um, um, encounters and then uh, these are kept, uh, in, kept secret. And he was also, uh, you know, uh, referring to anti gravity uh, patterns uh, because uh, quite a lot of thing, uh, people st think that the anti-gravity patterns are already there and the technology is there. However, these things are not given uh, to the, uh, uh, to the uh, 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 not made public. So this guy was looking, uh, allegedly looking for these files and uh, such uh, information. And meanwhile, he also deleted certain other uh, op system files. Now, the defense was quite interesting because did he find information on UFOs and anti-gravity? Well, tonight uh, over a beer I'll talk about that and I'll also talk about womanizing, okay? Anyway, he did find, by the way, he did find, because he also had seen UFOs and when this was uh, uh, also concealed, kept secret, then this was how he realized that this uh, uh, was a general practice. And you know, he had this autist type of uh, monofocal, monofocal um, approach. Anyway, legally speaking, let's see the defense arguments. His, the defense said that even in these uh, highly protected systems, there were certain uh, machines uh, that were not secured. Uh, there were no passwords, or the password was password. Therefore, it was very easy uh, to break in. Uh, there were no firewalls in certain cases. And eventually, uh, he also wanted to point out uh, that uh, there were so many security shortfalls and uh, uh, um, uh, secu yeah, security uh, shortfalls. Now. The reason why this is interesting as an argument is because this is actually, this had a certain element of truth. Uh, because even Hungarian law says that un unauthorized access is punishable only if the system has defense mechanism and they do work, they do function as well. So they are up and running. Uh, therefore, they are not switched off, they are not um, paused, and uh, they are not idle. And let me go further. Uh, the literature also says that uh, th such defense should also be effective. So, uh, you know, it's like uh, uh, it's like uh, when you do trespass. If uh, uh, trespass, you can only do trespass if there is a fence. And they say that you, it's not enough to have a fence which is like one meter uh, high. You need to have a two meters high fence because that's only proper defense or effective defense. But, you know, what is effective defense? These are all relative and not absolute categories. Uh, it's like, uh, you know, uh, the, the commentary code, uh, this is not uh, detailed. So these are very much related to the given situation, and these are very much relative uh, to the situation and to the case. However, if we look at this specific uh, case, uh, the systems of the U.S. Uh, military, uh, the U.S. Armed Forces, so the defense has to be effective as well. Uh, you know, having like password as the password, this is like leaving the gate open. And also you have a script uh, uh, about of saying that please come in and do trespass. Okay, the next case, uh, the U.S. versus Russia, uh, Soviet Federation, Alexei Ivanov and Vasily Gorshkov, who uh, were looking for, a, for jobs in the U.S. and for, the, for this purpose they uh, broke into a couple of, of job portals just to see the rivals and whatever. What really happened was that they changed the CVs of the rivals, and so there were a lot of other steps that they made in, in addition to just looking. And uh, uh, companies like Speakeasy or Nara Bank or its international bank uh, were also targeted for extorting money. I've seen. Uh, cases like this. We represented the Hungarian Financial Institute and the Russians tried very softly. We, 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 they sent an email that they said, we like Hungarian banks, looked at your pages, and 
we fund a few security issues with them. If you pay us $100,000, we'll tell you what these issues are. Obviously, you pay in advance. So you, never knew, you couldn't know whether they were uh, meaning it or not. They m were actually dealing in this. They, they, they were having a business on this. So they may have been uh, totally uh, uh, right about what they said. Uh, what the FBI did was a sting operation. They sent, they gave job offers to these people, and also gave gave them the uh, the task to 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 crack a, a system. Their own system was somebody else's, and then this was followed by an interview. And since the cracking was very high level, they felt very boastful. In the, during the interview, how, how how good they were, and uh, then uh, they were given another computer to crack, and uh, the FBI was monitoring the keyboards. So th these people were trying to uh, were using their home computer f uh, remotely to break into a, a allegedly target machine, and their passwords were then harvested by the FBI. And uh, they have downloaded from their home computers 2.7 gigabytes of data. And why is this important? Um, this whole area is very international. And the Russians uh, became, the Russian uh, authorities became a bit nervous about the FBI doing this thing operation. And uh, they were partly right because the uh, G8 treaty from 1997 clearly states that in cases like this, uh, the U.S. would have had to con contact Russian uh, law enforcement uh, organizations and involve them in the ploy, in the game, so as to allow them to get their people out. <laughs> this is not written in these words in the treaty, but this is the purpose. The U.S. says they tried to contact the Russians who did not pick up the phone, so it was pretty uh, high level. And the Russians said, no, they didn't try to contact us. The gist is that this is a very fast operation. The Americans finally successfully argued uh, using precedents dating back to the 1700s uh, to real buccaneers on high waters, <laughs> this would only interest a, lo a, 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 a lawyer. And the U.S. successful. The, so th what, what, what the U.S. was arguing was that obviously they they managed to get the the two guys' passwords. And while those two guys were sitting there at, at the fake interview, uh, the two to seven gigs were downloaded. So it was a very very fast operation. Uh, speed was of the essence because they might have thought themselves that, geez, uh, they'll, they'll get to my computer and might have deleted the data. So this was not days or weeks. It was a, an ish, a question of half an hour. And this was the only reason why they could capture those data. Uh, so this was a successful argumentation. And also, the U.S. did not use the proofs until they contacted the Russians and didn't accept this way of getting the uh, the proofs. Uh, and the U.S. only proceeded once these two conditions were met. So they did their best, actually, to meet the G8 treaty prescriptions. So this is a very important lesson from this case. Absolute urgency may over, uh, overrule cooperation requirements. The next case is United States versus Jesse Williams McGraw. This is a 2009 case. It's still in, still going on, so it's not. Uh, there's no uh, sentence yet. The interesting thing will be that the the persons were caught before committing the crime. This. He was a security, uh, Jesse Williams McGraw was a security guard of Dallas Hospital and a gang leader of a hacker gang. And they were using the hospital computers for building a botnet. And they planned to execute a DOS attack 
for the uh, uh, 9th of July, 9, 2004, that they called the Devil's Day. And the, what they wanted to achieve was to, to shut down the systems of multiple hospitals uh, causing problems in medicine supply, air conditioning, disruption, whatever. Uh, very laudable. Uh, this is what they wanted. But they committed the mistake to boast about this on YouTube, uh, putting up video screenshots about uh, screens of I I about the ins insides of or uh, cracked hospital computers, and then they also wrote about the air conditioning interfaces, like as if they had already been uh, inside the hospital. They tried to cover their faces, but not well enough. Okay, uh, on one of them, on a, s a personal identity card, a fake one, could be seen on the Im on the video. It was although it was a fake, but it carried his face. So this was the uh, hook that got him. So you should not do that from your home <laughs> if you're trying to boast about a, a crime not even committed. What's more, they also boasted to a person who was active, who was working in, in ID security, and he immediately reported the event. What is important in this case is that the that hacking preparations in and for themselves are not punishable according to criminal law. So if they commit it, it's punishable. If you prepare to commit a crime, for instance, if you bought a computer to do hacking, it's not punishable, even if you wanted to uh, get into a uh, foreign system. But there are cases where even preparations are punishable, like uh, uh, preparation for actions disabling uh, a hospital operation, air conditioning systems, etc. These cases are punishable even if they were only preparations and liable and subject to up to 20 years in prison. Another case is terrorism. There are very few such cases, uh, things that for which even the preparation for it is punishable, but these are. This is why these people could be jailed in a very early phase before the attack was executed. The last one I want to talk about is the uh, hacker crawl case. This was a pretty famous case. This person actually was doing white hat hacking, uh, and out of pure, the goodness of his heart, he actually cracked Obama's and Britney Spears' uh, websites, changed their profiles, downloaded the Twitter's, Twitter's, uh, downloaded the Twitter's company strategy. When you enter your Twitter account, you suddenly realize you have two pets. You only had one yesterday, the last time you checked. So this is what this person did. And in additional, and additionally, uh, he also uh, got access into Twitter's company uh, system and uh, downloaded strategy data. The method was interesting. He is not a really well-trained hacker, but very shrewd. He used, for instance, he collected everything about Obama and British Spears, all existing that he could hand, lay his hands on, uh, collecting their pets' names, family members' names, all birth dates he could collect, and he handled them, he managed them in an aggregated uh, database using these data to try to guess the passwords. Many people use the same pa username password f for all the uh, things that he needs it for. He doesn't, well, no, no, people don't want to remember 20 or 100 passwords and whatever. So if you crack a person's uh, iTunes account, you can uh, hope, reasonably hope, that the same username password will be good for other accounts of that person. He also 
use the fact that there are uh, uh, control questions for forgotten passwords. If you forget your password, you, 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 you send an email requesting password resend. Then they ask, what's your pet name or whatever you agreed on with them. And he knew all the words, all the names, all the pets and birthdays and whatever. So he used all these data. Uh, he wasn't technically well prepared, but we did have a pretty professional database. And he tried a lot. And he tried his hands on multiple celebrities, not only Britney Spears. Legally, however, uh, defense. Defense said that this was a harmless action by a nice pirate. He called himself actually a nice pirate, a likable one too. He even blogged about, uh, blogged to, to, to provide help. Don't take notes here because all the uh, uh, presentations are on my Facebook wall, so you can download them. I'll check you back uh, to, for you to be able to do so. So this was the typical uh, white hat hacker uh, defense. He also write a tearful letter to Twitter. It's simply beautiful. Or they wrote it in French. Uh, excuse my English. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can read. I published on Twitter. I believe this company will be going to places and make money by that. Security is a topic that has interested me for many years, and I want to turn my hobby into a career. Now, uh, put up your hands who don't believe him. So this is a pretty typical story, and. It ended well uh, in that the uh, jury accepted this uh, defense. All he did was actually illegal access to the uh, to a site that he broke in, and also what he did was he changed or deleted a couple of data. These are pretty simple and did not really cause any damage. But what is important is that uh, even white hat hacking may uh, go against local legislation. And then you may be subject to some nasty surprises, plus damages in, if applicable. So you should know your limits where you, can, where, where you are working. And the non-legal conclusion is, from this last case, is that it might be worth the legal list to get yourself a good hack, a, a, a good job, if you can make sure that you do not uh, uh, transgress uh, the limits until which you can go. Hacker crawl was sentenced only to five months, and even that was suspended. But in exchange, he got three very, very good job offers, out of which he accepted one and is still having it. So this is the lesson. Thank you. And slides are on my uh, Facebook wall. Enjoy your meal.